Italians are leaving their homes for better lives elsewhere, leaving behind these homes that the governments are now forced to sell for as little as one euro. The Italian economy is stagnant, the wages aren't keeping up, and the population is aging. And practically all the G7 countries currently are facing some form of these issues. But it's just Italy that is facing all of them at the same time. In today's video, we try to break down why one of the most affluent economies of Europe is stagnating and suffering. So let's get started. Italy is home to some of the biggest brands in the world like Gucci, Prada, Ferrari and Lamborghini. All of these brands have made a lot of money in the last few decades, especially with the luxury goods market of the world doing so well. However, the rest of the economy is struggling. And furthermore, the situation is way worse when you look at the south of Italy. With all the industries being in the north, south is struggling to keep people around. A lot of the population in the south of Italy has either immigrated to other countries or they've moved to the north leaving behind those empty houses we were initially talking about in this video. In order to understand the issues that Italian economy faces, let's do a bit of a deeper dive into the basics of Italian economy, and this should then lead us to the root cause analysis of why they're in the situation. The foundation of the modern Italian economy was laid right after World War II. After the war, Italy was in desperate need for reconstruction and reindustrialization. And given the popularity of communism in post-war Italy, America was really interested in providing them with financial aid through the Marshall Plan. This gives us a perfect harmony. America receives a bunch of military bases which are very close to the Soviet Union and at the same time, Italians receive a bunch of money allowing them to rebuild their economy. Throughout the fascist regime of Mussolini, a tight control was maintained on the Italian economy. However, after World War II, the focus moved from state control to one of achieving economic independence for the economy. Even though the focus was on economic independence, state-owned entities played a crucial role in these years. For example, IRI, a institute that was founded by Mussolini in his fascist regime, was still playing a very vital role in this post-World War II era. IRI played a crucial role in reconstructing war-damaged industries. Companies that were not profitable were taken over and were remodernized and made profitable once again. And at the same time, IRI also focused on developing strategic industries like steel, energy, chemicals, things that are needed to develop overall economy of the country. And if IRI wasn't doing enough, they also played a critical role in redeveloping the infrastructure of the country. Again, another thing that is very crucial to developing a strong economy. The driver of this Italian economic recovery wasn't just IRI or the American money. A very vital role was played by the small and medium-sized enterprises within Italy. A staggering 95% of the businesses in Italy are still categorized as SME, which is far more than any of their other European counterparts. Due to their small footprint, they were very adaptable and were able to retool their production lines to meet the post-war needs of the country. You see, a lot of these smaller enterprises are family-owned, and they have been passing down craftsmanship and skill generation to generation. It is this craftsmanship that is responsible for Italian economy's massive hold on the luxury goods sector. There is a reason why Italian brands are seen as a premium product. All three things, IRI, the American money, and SMEs are responsible for the Italian economic recovery that was seen after the World War II. During the years between 1960 and 1980, the Italian economy was growing like a weed. It was growing at 8% some years. Famous Italian brands that we know of today, that's when they took off. The small and medium enterprises of Italy were producing everything from handcrafted things like leather suitcases and cars to mass-produced things like typewriters, fridges and the Vespas and Fiats, things that had a cult following. They were known for their quality. However, there's always a however. Towards the end of the 1970s, this economic boom started to stagnate. This was mainly due to the increase in terrorism, political instability and our good old friend, the oil crisis. For the next five to eight years, the economy was really struggling with high unemployment and high inflation. However, by the mid-1980s, the government stepped in and they increased their public spending to rejuvenate the economic growth. All the major economies in the world go through phases of growth, stagnation and sprinkled with a little bit of recession here and there. And so has the Italian economy. However, this latest stint of stagnation has lasted way longer than what Italy would have hoped for almost 20 years at this point. Now, a lot of the economists argue that this stagnation and the reasons for it started developing in the 1970s with the total factor of productivity peaking at its maximum back then. In my research and for the purpose of this film, I have really focused on the causes rather than when they started impacting the Italian economy, even though a lot of them, yes, have been in effect for a long time. 
Just like the transition from being a war-torn country to economic powerhouse didn't happen overnight, the transition from an economic powerhouse to one that is stagnating didn't happen overnight either. There are mainly five key factors that have played an influential role in taking Italy down the path it is today. Let's start by looking at the first one, that is the political doom loop that Italy is in. Since World War II, Italy has gone through 69 prime ministers. Average government lasts only 1.1 years. This revolving door of leadership leads to many negative consequences for the Italian economy and the country in general. These consequences are very similar to what we noticed in our video about the British economic stagnation. Links in the description. And if you're enjoying this video, do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. Let's continue. Governments with short tenures really prioritize coming up with policies that are looking good in the short term. Meanwhile, they really screw the country over in the long run. This constant change in governments and their policies has led to a decreased faith in the Italian economy, which has further led to a decreased foreign direct investment, which is of course not good for the economy. This excessive spending over the years has ballooned the public debt of Italy, which is our next issue. In the past, during economic downturns, Italy has followed the common practice of borrowing money to stimulate economy through public spending, which is common. Everyone does it. There's no big issue there. However, this strategy has backfired. You see, over the years, Italy has accumulated so much debt that a significant portion of its resources are dedicated towards servicing the interest on these loans. Italy is essentially stuck in a cycle where it borrows money to tread water, but struggles to make headway on this big, enormous debt they have outstanding. Now, a simple way of reducing public debt would be increase your revenue. And one of the ways you increase your revenue is by taxing the people more. However, due to the economic doom loop, Italian governments can't really tax people because that would be an unpopular move. The Italian governments don't just struggle to increase the taxes, they also struggle to collect this tax, which is also our issue number three. The size of the black market and the tax avoidance that happens in Italy is significant. Italian economy has always had a massive black market, also known as an informal economy, where basically in an informal economy, a lot of economic stuff is happening, but no one's paying taxes. This informal economy or the black market represents a significant portion of the taxes that the government never gets, making it very hard for the government to spend on critical things like infrastructure and education, things that would help the economy not stagnate. Remember the small and medium-sized enterprises we were talking about, the ones that are the backbone of the Italian economy? Unfortunately, they're very susceptible to the allure of the black market. Facing tight margins and complex regulations, some of these SMEs are tempted towards operating in the informal economy. This allows them to reduce their cost, making it profitable for them. This directly impacts the amount of revenue the government generates. But indirectly, it is also an issue for the other SMEs that are following the rules. Enterprises that are adhering to the taxation and legal obligations struggle to compete with the black market actors who can just undercut them because their cost is lower, because they're not paying any taxes. This reduction in profitability makes it very hard for even legitimate SMEs to expand their business, to innovate and to spend more money towards research and development. This lack of research and development brings us to our next issue, that is low productivity that exists within Italy. This lack of innovation and reinvestment into the business has led to a reduced productivity of an Italian employee. Basically, an Italian employee will produce a lot less than a European Union counterpart within the same 40 hours spent working. In fact, this low productivity is such a big issue that the total factor of productivity has been stagnant since 1970s, especially when compared to other European Union members. Without consistent investment in research and development and employee training, businesses fall behind on latest technologies and processes, making the worker less productive. This leaves the Italian workers stuck with outdated methods, reducing their output, especially when compared to the European counterparts. This not only reduces their productivity and efficiency, but also creates an unsafe environment. Even though Italy has a lot of skilled people, they're more likely to choose not to work for these Italian firms, but move elsewhere where a, they can perform better, and B, they would be safer because a significant amount of money is being invested into their safety and research and development. And being unable to attain their full potential, a lot of these skilled workers are leaving the country, bringing us to our next point, the population decline that is happening in Italy. Italy's fertility rate has declined like many other developed countries. By 1980, an average Italian woman gave birth to two kids. But by 2022, this number has come down to 1.24 births per woman, which is way below the number needed to maintain a healthy population. In 2014, the Italian population peaked at 60 million people. 
and ever since it has only come down. It is also expected that by the year 2070, if the trend continues, they'll be left with just 40 million or so people. The result is a huge aging population. With the life expectancy of 83 years, Italy is one of the oldest population on the face of this earth, making it very hard for the economy to grow. You see, when you have a lot of older people who depend on the government for their welfare and take care, the people who are working suffer, the economy stagnates. That's why having a healthy population is very important and guess what Italy doesn't have? A lot of the governments and countries in the world face these issues that we just discussed at different times of their existence. However, Italy is just one of those cases where all of these things are A, happening at the same time, B, they are contributing to each other. As to what can be done, I believe the government has a huge role to play here. I'm all for capitalism and economic freedom, but the government still has to provide a stable framework where businesses can work and, you know, really develop. However, the big question on how to stop the political doom loop, that's still unanswered. Recently, the country elected a very right-leaning politician by the name of Georgia Maloney. Now, she's taken a few good steps, she's taken a few bad steps. Only time will tell what comes out of it. For all we know, by the time I hit publish on this video, she might be out of office. So we'll see. Anyways, that's it for this video. That's how Italy got into the rough waters that it's in. I'll see you in two weeks' time from now. Peace.